and the more you worry, the more you think, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, the worse you make it. It's like your airways are closing up. We are very interested in how the brain is involved in your perception of breathing and breathlessness. So for example, some people with really bad lungs manage to get along fine, whereas other people whose lungs might not be so bad actually suffer terribly. And it's this mismatch between what we can measure as doctors in the lungs and in the heart and how people experience their illness. Everyone perhaps underestimates the power of the mind. People are very hard on themselves and they think, oh, it's all in my head. It's not real. But when you start to appreciate how much control your brain has on the way that your body works, your whole neural pathways act as if something was happening to you. And that's a big change in thinking from the old biomedical model that we were taught about in medical school where disease leads to symptoms and we focus a lot on disease. I'm a climber. I've always noticed that the first day is really difficult, yet after a couple of days climbing it all becomes a lot easier. I, I'm sure I haven't got that much fitter in two days. So that was one of the ways I started to think about breathlessness. Pulmonary rehabilitation is a six-week course of exercise and education. We're aiming to um, increase the, the fitness of the patients, then make sure that they know as much as they can about their condition and how to manage it. We are characterising these people and kind of filling in this, this fingerprint of their behaviour. Pulmonary rehab seems to have an influence on some of these brain pathways associated with perception and particularly associated with the way you evaluate your internal bodily sensations. We put people into the scanner and we show them um, breathlessness related words and say this is, what, this is the areas that are relevant to that neural processing. We're very interested in a task where we get people to uh, sense uh, slight changes in the ease of their breathing. And what we're really trying to see there is A, how accurate they can be, how sensitive they can be, so whether somebody can tell very small differences or other people need much bigger differences. But then also looking at their confidence in their ability there. What I've found with the data is that there are distinct types of people, and that's not based on their physiology, their lung damage, it's based on their psychology and it's based on their brain networks. And this is very exciting because ordinarily you might look at somebody's lung capacity, their spirometry, and say, right, you get this drug or you get that drug. And so if we look at the brain networks, we might be able to develop personalized medicine based on that and based on the psychology. I always knew that I was interested in asking questions when I was younger. It was only when I got to university that I started to see researchers out and about, okay, I could do that, I could be that. They ask questions all day and problem solve puzzles all day and I'd love to do that.